means it's flowering terminally. Okay? Avocado is flowering terminally. Terminally means at the tip of the shoot, that bud will become, in this case, an avocado, a panicle. A panicle is the inflorescence. It's a lot of flowers. It means actually there's a primary axis, there's a, a secondary axis, there's tertiary axis, or whatever. No? So it's a big branching that bears flower at the tip of each branch. And every single flower, as I said yesterday, is a hermaphrodite flower, and hermaphrodite means it's male and female. Okay? So every single, and this is comparison, you must remember and write down. In an avocado, all flowers, in theory, can set fruit, if possible. So every single flower is hermaphrodite flower. Hopefully you recall Bihukhami. I'm not going into that much. No? But every single flower is male and female. And this is the most important part of it all. And I hope you can see, and it's unfortunate, maybe the last two rows, come and sit in front here, if you don't mind. Then you'll be able to see, because this is crucial. This is for sure. 20 to 30 marks in the exam. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not giving anybody stop, ever. So you come to me after, just before the exam, or saying, Sir, give me scope. I'm giving you three after four. I'm telling you what is the question in the exam. You just have to make these notes. Okay. They are very, very important fathers. You see what we call the primary axis. That means the original one that became a flower is not a flower. You see what I mean here? There was the terminal bud over there. No? Then it starts flowering, making these axes. No? Then it kept on growing, and then it made leaves. So what you write down there is avocado, central axis bud. The central axis bud stayed vegetatively. Vegetative means it will make shoots and leaves. Must I repeat? I'm saying. The central axis bud of the panicle of the avocado flower stays vegetatively. The rest is flowers, no problem. Okay. Now this is the important, and this is differences that I'm giving you now. Because as I go to the mango, you'll see what the differences are. The important part here is this central axis, and in this case it's a bit further because it started growing already, it started making new leaves already. But usually it's like this, or like that. That bud is vegetative, it's not a flower. No. That will start growing and become this. What does it mean? The first thing is, you don't want this new growth. Why not? This growth is eating all the sugars that the plant producing. 
Now it's making leaves and branches. This energy that went in this should have gone to fruit. So this flush is not wanted, is unwanted flush. You'll see in my exams and tests, I'm saying, explain the different growth flushes in avocados. Which one is wanted, which one is unwanted? Discuss in detail. And how does it affect your cultivation practices? Wrong question, 20 marks, no problem. Then you must start with the morphology because this is morphology. You say, first of all, it is terminal flowering, as you've written down. Now, then you say it's a panicle, but the central axis stays vegetatively, as you've written down. Then you say this new growth from the central axis will happen just after fruit set occurred. Now, so the reserves is being used by the new growth instead that it's being utilized by the fruit. So what is the consequences of that? With that growth, you have less fruit, you will have smaller fruit, you will have, have lower production, you will walk on the farm <coughs> and not drive a <laughs> I'm going to give you some time to think what I've said and you make notes of what I've said. Okay? It's the central axis, it's vegetatively, it's growing, it's using energy unnecessarily. We in fruit production, not wood production. We don't want this growth. Why? Because this growth compete with my fruit. If this flush is massive, all my fruit will drop prematurely. And then? Then I won't even walk on the farm. Someone else will walk on my farm. <laughs> I will lose my farm. Why will I lose my farm? The bank will sell it to someone that can farm. can you do about it? God created the family. <coughs> we can't say he made a mess out of it. We can never say it. But it's not good for us as a farmer. So, obviously, <coughs> I will not promote this growth with whatever I'm doing. You cannot go and say, I'm going to break it off. How many of these things are in a, in a tree? Never mind in an orchard. So it's impractical, you can't do it. Okay? In other words, this happens after flowering. When is it flowering? It's August now. Nah. So when is this ever flowering? In June, July. So just after July, like in August, now you get this flush. This leaf flush, vegetative. You know the difference between reproductive growth and vegetative growth? No. Reproductive is flowers and fruit to reproduce. Vegetative is leaves and branches and whatever, shoots and whatever. No. Okay, so now the important thing is, and you must write down, there are two flushes in an avocado, vegetative flushes. Two avocado, vegetative flushes. The book describes it, and I'm going to explain it quickly, you don't need to write now. The, the book saying there's a spring flush and, and 
summer flush or all, um, spring flush is now, and the other one is what they call the summer flush. And you must understand, it doesn't work really that well to to address it according to the month of the year. I personally <coughs> prefer to say that flush is better to qualify it in the sense of when it's happening. Such as that flush now is the post flower flush. After it has flowered, it will give a vegetative flush. That's what I say post flower flush. The other flush will happen after you've harvested your crop. In other words, post harvest flush. Okay? That's where I differ from what is in the handbook, and it's my prerogative to differ. I think it is less. Um, to make your make anybody a bit of my car. And I'll qualify for what I'm saying. Avocados today, if there's so many cultivars in South Africa in the world that we do grow avocados or we harvest avocados throughout the year. Okay? For instance there's Fiati that will harvest in March. Then there's Pinkerton that will harvest in May. Then there's Edrimal that will harvest in um, July. Then there's Brian that will harvest in September. Then there's Glen and there's Landhass and there's Landhass and whatever. In other words, what I'm saying to you is you can grow avocados that you can harvest from January until December. So if you say summer flush, then I say to you, but listen, what about the cultivars that you're harvesting in winter? That's not summer. Do you hear what I'm saying? In other words, if that tree has been harvested, it does go into a vegetative flush. Whenever you're harvesting it, when you harvest it, it will go in a vegetative flush. That's why I qualify by saying post harvest flush. And I'm also saying post flower flush. Because in this case, that's Fiati. It's flowering now. Okay? It's not really spring already. Spring is more likely September, October, man. But okay, not to worry. Then you get Ryan that will flower only but in October. Okay. Therefore, for your sake, and this you must write down, there's two flushes. The one is post-harvest flush. Exactly what I'm saying. The second one is post-flower flush. Saying exactly what I'm saying. Now, Post-harvest flush. In other words, you remove the fruit. Now it's making new leaves and shoots. That is the <coughs> one you want. That is the wanted flush. Why? Because that is the shoots that will flower. Do you hear what I'm saying? After you have harvested, there will be a flush. Nice. The more... And the bigger the flush is, the more flowers there will be, the more fruit will set, the more money you'll make. Then you buy yourself a chopper. Okay. <laughs> you see why it's science? And how does it work? How does it work? The wanted flush is the first harvest flush because that is where it will flower. Why? Because it's flowering terminally on the tip of the shoot. So it must make new shoot to have a terminal bud where it can flower. Okay? I'm giving you a hell of a lot of information. Okay? Then the post flower flush is, for obvious reasons, not one.
want one because as I said, it competes with my food. I'm not doing forestry. Okay, I'm in food production. So that is my unwanted flush. Now the important thing is how does it affect your cultivation practices in this case specifically two things. The one is your fertilizer program and the other one is that you will apply growth inhibitors. Okay, so obviously about a month, six weeks prior the expected flush or the wanted flush and remember I'm not giving you a calendar month because as I said your harvesting can be any time of the year. Now, if I've got fiati, it means around about middle of January, I'll apply my nitrogen. Why? I want to boost my, I want to optimize my post-harvest flush. I want to maximize my wanted flush. Now, so, Nitrogen is important for vegetation or vegetative growth. Yeah? That's why I apply nitrogen. Sorry, you were the wrong venue. Oh, you just came late. Well, that's okay. Okay, because you've lost a lot now, unfortunately. The other thing is very important here is you're not going to apply any nitrogen on the unwanted flush. Never. Because you don't want it. What you can do, and what is the other one, is that you will apply and the chemical name or the active ingredient is pacubitrazol. <laughs> Pacubitrazol is a gerberylic acid inhibitor. Even worse than I'm giving you now. <laughs> but you need to know you will apply SONY, S O N N Y. That is the common name. SONY, you will apply just before flowering. What does it do? It will decrease the synthesis of gibberellic acid. And what is gibberellic acid? That's a plant hormone <coughs> that stimulates vegetative growth. You see how complex this thing becomes? Yeah? I don't expect, except the students that were all working for, um, to get 75% or higher, distinction. The distinction students, they must give me these things. <laughs> so, if you don't give me these things, the possibility that you get it more than 15 out of 20 is a bit limited. But it's not a trend smash. And I actually would like you to go and work in the library uh, regarding these things because gibberellic acid is one of those nice things we're using in a lot of, uh, um, in agriculture. We treat mazamba with gibberellic acid then it will sprout a lot and will bear a lot of, um, or make a lot of changes. So there's a lot of uses of this gibberellic acid. But okay, in this case, we don't want gibberellic acid because the plant produced gibberellic acid himself. We will tell it, or we will see to it, that the tree does not produce chips. What will you see? What will be visible for you? You'll see that the internodes, where it may be quite long, it's very, very, very short. 
the leaves are very, very small. The energy that the tree used for the post-flower unwanted flush will be about 10 to 20 percent instead of if you didn't use it, it would have used a lot of energy. No? In other words, 80 percent of the energy of the sugars, of the, of the carbohydrates that the leaves produce go to the fruit now and not to the leaves and shoots. Do you understand? <laughs> Shell shock. <laughs> you see why no one can go and farm <coughs> if he didn't get proper agricultural training. How will you know these things if you will not get? He just go and apply sonic because the red got to him and say, hey, you must spray this one. And then he spray this one, all the value out of it. And then he's making a mess out of it. That's why you, BSC students, must know why are you applying these things. I can tell the students in the diploma, you do this. They're diploma students. They're not inferior, <laughs> but they use. You're different. That's why your papers in the exams and tests is obviously, definitely, much more difficult. You're a BSC student, aren't you? Remember one thing. Mark, my undergraduate is also a BSC, I think. That's why I know this. But luckily, or unlucky for you, or whatever you want, the way you want to see it, I'm working with these things commercially. So I understand what I'm doing, and why I'm doing certain things. Yeah? And that is the difference, really, between someone that just got calm and doesn't really have got any, <laughs> any uh, knowledge to do it, and as a matter of fact, and this is something outside the curriculum. You can very easily now demand land because you're educated in agriculture. You hear what I'm saying? If they start dishing out land, whatever, government land, state land, whatever, you must be the first ones to stand in the queue. All right, the letter to the prisoner saying, hey, well, I have money. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what to do. <laughs> saying now. Because in this case, I'm talking about the flower, or then the way it's flowering and the way it affects your um, yield eventually. Okay. Also, I can ask you, compare the inflorescence of the following crops. And then I can list a lot of crops for you there. 
And then this is the thing she has to tell me. Okay. Now, the next one is our friend the mango. And this one specifically is Heidi. They are up on the farm. And you'll see that's also flowering terminally. There's the shoot, that's the shoot, and that is the terminal bud. But in the case of a mango, we've got actually a ring node. A ring node means there's buds on the same level, five or six. That's why you get one, two, three, four panicles. That's a panicle alone. That's a panicle on its own. So there's four panicles here. Okay. But the difference between a mango and an avocado is avocados are done. There is not even one percent of these flowers that is dermaphrodite. Less than one percent is dermaphrodite. The rest of them is male. So more than 99% of these flowers you see here cannot set fruit. It can mean set fruit. It can mean our babies. I don't think so. Not in my life. Maybe it can happen one day. I don't know. But what I'm saying is there's really a very limited amount of these flowers that can set fruit. And very important, the terminal bud or the terminal on your primary axis or your central axis is a flower. Remember what I said about ours? The central bud is vegetative. Now, in this case, it's a flower. So this one cannot and will not flower after it has flowered. <laughs> well, let me rephrase now. I may make my cube become a car. I'm saying, in mango, there is no post flower flush because the central axis is a flower. Maybe that's more for Stambach. You know for Stambach? Comprehend. Who is Portuguese here? Non comprehend. Alright. The other thing you need to know, and this is quite important. In a mango's case, mangoes are grown in subtropical area, it means it's quite cold. And the stimulus or the, the flower initiation in mango is low temperature. Okay? So if the temperature drops below, depends on cultivar, let's say in the case of Tommy Atkins. If the temperature drops below 12 degrees Celsius, obviously it will be at night. For more than five hours, it will get the message you have to flower. Now that can happen even as soon as in April. If it happens in April, now the time from flower initiation for until flower differentiation, until flowers start developing is only three weeks in mangoes. Only three weeks. Okay? In other words, if this thing got the message it must flower in April, it means it will flower in May. And you can imagine what happened with these flowers and fruit development at such low temperatures. Now, just quickly saying this, if the temperature drops below 12 degrees Celsius after pollination occurred, no fertilization will happen. Why not? Normal pollination occurred. No? You hear what I'm saying? Normal pollination occurred. Why? Because in the case of a mango, and you can smell it, it stinks actually, it doesn't smell nice. So it does not attract actually bees, but it attracts fly. 
You know the normal housefly? And the big brommer, the one with the diesel engine? <laughs> you see the pollination. All right. In other words, we'll do the pollination, no problem. And then when the pollen germinated and start growing down the style, if the temperature during that process dropped below 12 degrees Celsius, it is killed. Dead. The pollen will grow down the stall to do, go and do the fertilization with the egg and the ovary. But if the temperature drops below 12 degrees Celsius, that pollen will stop growing and will be killed. So there's no fertilized egg. What happens? You'll get fruit that will develop up to golf ball size. Golf ball, you know golf ball? It will not go bigger than that. Why not? Because there's no seed inside. Why not? Because the egg wasn't fertilized. Why not? Because <coughs> the important thing is those golf ball size is what we call mule fruit. Mule M U L E. <coughs> Mule fruit. You know what is a mule? Mule is a cross between a horse and a donkey. And that mule is also <coughs> sterile. Did you know that? Mm. Okay. That's why we call it mule fruit. So what I'm saying is, the fruit doesn't drop. You're going to pay a lot of that for me for that video now. Yeah, you can buy it from him and I will charge him again. The important thing, Justice, is to say it doesn't drop off if it's not fertilized. No? It stays on the tree and it will develop up to, as I say, golf ball size. How do you know it's a meal fruit? First thing is it tends to crack. <coughs> it's got very, very rough skin. What we say, very prominent, lengthy cells. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Okay, I say it's got very prominent, lengthy cells. It's got a very rough, leathery type of skin. And then you must write down there, there's two cultivars that's very susceptible to mule fruit. The one is peach cultivar, it's mango, peach like a peach, you eat peach cultivar, very, very popular under the African, South Africans. You go into Kangani or to Banki or Winar or Tonga or Buzinti or wherever, mm -hmm. you'll see every house got a mango tree and that mango tree will be peach. That's that one with a lot of fiber in that is usually green in color, okay, and it's ripe, it's yellow, but it's a very nice edible mango, and that's why actually everybody in South Africa is very fond of it. But you'll see, if it's in a cooler area like Nasway or White River, the whole tree is this new fruit. It's now too early. The other one that tends to do that is sensation. Sensation. It's a fiberless mango. Now what's the remedy? First is you don't plant those cultivars as easy as that in cold areas. The second um, thing you can do is to go and, this is important, you break off all flowers before they open. So you start, start seeing that there is flower starting developing. Then you can go and break off those flowers. Now what we do in, in the farm is we go and we break it off the way I broke it off there. Now, 
So I break off the whole, basically the, the terminal bud. I break it off. It's very brittle, so it breaks off easily. No problem. But it's a massive work. You can imagine those trees can become very, very big. So what you do is you go and break it off in April, May, when it is flowering now. Before individual flowers open, crucial. Because if the, if the flowers open, it will not flower again. Do you hear what I'm saying? You must write down what I'm saying. Because I can ask you to discuss real truth for me in detail in mangoes. I'm saying you remove all flowers before individual flowers open. Then it will flower for second time six to eight weeks after you have removed the flowers. Okay, so basically two months later it will flower again. So then it will flower around about August, September. Then it's much hotter and then you don't get meal fruit. An interesting thing that I, when I did the research, and I did the research on these crops for 15 years, that's why I know also a little bit about these crops. The important thing about mangoes, the hotter it is, now that's the higher the temperature is when flowering. <coughs> yeah. The higher the temperature is during flowering, the higher percentage hermaphrodite flowers you will get. Very important. I want maximum amount of hermaphrodite flowers. Very common to talk. Mfunani! Right. <laughs> Any questions regarding Alice and Magnus? It's panicles. I have to do leeches and then I'm going to do um, macadamias as well, but Macadamias, unfortunately, I didn't bring an example because my trees on the farm is not flowering yet. I don't want them to flower. I want the oldest winds to go away. Then I want my flowers. And the reason is, if the wind is blowing these hot winds, it actually dry out the flowers and you don't get nuts. That's why we don't want them. And certain cultivars are more susceptible than others. And you can plant certain cultivars in the flower very early and then you end up with a problem that your flower dry out and you don't get nuts. That's why we're not able to bring because I haven't got flowers yet and I'm very glad about it. Right, this is our friend Litchi, Litchi Sinensis. Again it's a panicle. Again it is like a mango that the terminal but, or then the terminal but on the central axis is a flower. But, and this is very important, this. The flowers are leeches. There's three types of functional types of flowers. <coughs> the first flowers that will open they're all male. <coughs> then you'll get a second opening of flowers. It's different flowers. They are female flowers, or then hermaphrodite flowers. And then you get the third time when it's opening, and then it's again just male flowers. Okay. So for you, it's important to know you must stimulate massive amount of flowers because only a third of these flowers can become leeches. Okay. So we're going to 
going to talk much about the biggest flower. Right, the other one is macadamias. Macadamia is flowering laterally. Laterally means it's flowering inside the tree. It means on two year or older wood. Last year's wood or the year before that, whatever. Flowering on that wood. So it's flowering inside. I wanted to make copies from the internet, but clearly university Wi-Fi doesn't work, so I'm not able. If I was at home, I could have done it, but in this, I can't. Um, I wanted to show you, actually, we do distinguish between two types of flowers in academia, related to the color, the pink-colored inflorescence of Mac, Mac is the tetraphyllum. All these plain to know. All these plain to know. There are certain cultivars that is Macadamia tetraphyllum, and they have got pink flowers. Integrafolia has got white flowers. All right? Now, what is the flower of a Macadamia? We call it the racine. What is a racine? Racine is a single axis with approximately 200 individual flowers attached to that primary axis. Okay? It hasn't got any petals. And every single flower can become a nut. So it is a hermaphrodite flowers. It can set fruit because the nut is in any case just the seed of the tree. Okay. What's the time? <coughs> I think you're exhausted, Mama. what I'm doing is you to understand hopefully now why I expect that you're going to read these stuff. Because what I'm telling you is definitely not in that. I'm quite sure about that. You don't get these things. That's why they have to pay me a salary to come and tell you these things. But I'm not sure for how long I want.